Good morning, everybody. And a very warm welcome to you all here. And if you're, if you're listening on YouTube or recording stick, a very warm welcome to you as well. We miss you. And we do hope that as you join us, that you will feel very much part of what we do this morning. And as you can see, this, this morning's service will include the sacraments, our communion. So our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 95, and it's verses 1 to 2. The psalmist says this, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Let's pray. Lord, we lift up our hearts to you this morning in love and adoration. And we praise you for your greatness. You are the great and mighty King. And all glory belongs to you. And no matter what we say this morning, words cannot describe how awesome you are. You are the creator of heaven and earth, and everything belongs to you. And Lord, our heart bursts with joy when we think of you. So Lord, we give you this morning our joyful worship. Amen. Please stand. We're going to sing two songs. Um, and I'm going to ask you all for a favour. Due to lack of singing expertise by my good self, you need to sing loud, because I haven't got singing help on the first couple. So please, sing as loud as you possibly can. OK? And so please, we'll, sit, we'll stand and we'll sing Shout for Joy. And this morning, you shall take the highest honour. Let's sing that, shall we? Jesus shall take the highest honour.
want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to worship you this morning. Be glorified. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Alice is going to come and share with us about Pearl's New Year's Angels of Hope. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I have the privilege here to stand in front of Pearl's Angels that she has knitted for hospice care. Um, as you know, hospice care, the funds are really, really low. Um, so they're doing this fund, fund, fundraising scheme so we can help look after people who are really, really struggling. And um, I think after such a lot of darkness, what we really need to start this new year is hope. Um, there's nothing like somebody getting engaged to bring hope. <laughs> bring hope in the darkness. And it reminds me of um, being a being a, a bride and um, the bridegroom coming down and meeting us, bridegroom being Jesus. And we're all dressed in our finery in, in hope. And he comes down and he sees us and he takes us to be his bride. Just going to read you this. We shall wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, and in him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And I think the most important things in that, apart from hope, is trust, trusting in him. When I went through all my treatment, I had to put my trust in him. Whatever happened, I've had to put my trust in him. And love. He loves us unconditionally. So let's go into the new year of hope. And Pearl said to me before the service started that these angels that she knitted need a home so they can look after people this coming year. So I've got a collection box there. So you can you can buy an angel if you like. And sort of put a donation in, in the collection box for hospice care. Thank you. Uh, good morning and a happy new year to you all. And may you have many blessings and encouragements in the coming months. So, pastoral news. Well, Mike is still suffering with a very painful eye. He's having regular different drops during the day and um, he's got gel to apply at bedtime. When Mike saw the doctor at the rd &E on Friday, there were small signs of improvement. The ulcer is getting a bit smaller but there's still a long way to go. And Mike told me last evening that it's not initially to do with his contact lens, but it goes back some 18 months or so when he had COVID. And this affected his eye and has given him long COVID. Um, and the doctor over at the rd &E sent a specimen from his eye to the School of Tropical Medicine and in London to analyse it. And it's a bug that they doesn't know where it's come from, but it's causing a lot of trouble. Um, some of his eye drops are antibiotics and he's on antibiotic tablets for 45 days. And Sue is downstairs setting the uh, alarm clock for when it's the next time to give the drop. So let's remember Sue as well. She's getting very tired and she still herself has pain in her back. And she hopes to speak to her doctor sometime this week about the result of her x-ray. And Mike asked me to give you his love. 
I had a phone call from Anne Jones on Friday asking for urgent prayer for her niece's family. That's Hannah, her husband Will, and their little boy, Ethan. Will had his COVID booster jab on the Monday after Christmas, but unfortunately he experienced a very, very rare side effect when the vaccine escaped into his bloodstream causing damage to his lungs and his heart. But as I say, this is a very, very rare complication in a young man. And he's now waiting for an ECG to investigate that there's no permanent damage to either his heart or lungs. But an added concern is Hannah's second baby is due in only a month's time. And we shall pray in a moment for renewed health and strength for that little family and that Will will have no permanent damage and Hannah have a safe delivery of their second child. But how comforting it is, isn't it, that God knows every detail in that little family and nothing is impossible with him. And that's why we have the privilege of praying for them. I spoke to Zoe just before Christmas she told me her little girl, Mila, had tested positive for COVID and was really quite poorly. I caught up with Zoe yesterday evening and she said they all tested positive except Jacob. And they all had different symptoms, but they're all right now. Yesterday was Zoe's first day back at work and last night she was absolutely exhausted. And she's working again this morning, and I assured her we would pray for her for strength to cope as a carer today. Steve is still feeling the side effects of his dose of COVID. It's great you're here today, Steve, but it's left him still with um, some chest pains, and he's feeling very tired. And we continue to pray for you, Steve. Andrew had a um, recent x-ray on his leg and he's waiting for the results. And Julie asked for prayer for her cousin Alan over in Thailand. We prayed for him a couple of months ago. He's in a lot of pain, Julie says, with a pelvic hernia and he's awaiting surgery. But lastly, let's finish with some good news. We give our many congratulations to Anne, Anne Hart, on the safe arrival of her first great-grandchild, a little boy, a little boy, George Adam, born on Christmas Eve to Adam and Grace, Anne's granddaughter. And may he bring great joy to all your family, Anne. And lastly, it's with great joy we can congratulate Mervyn and Caroline on their engagement. We're delighted for you. <laughs> Let's now bring all these dear folk before our miracle working God, that each one will know his touch on their lives. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to come into your holy presence to share with you our concerns for those folk you've laid on our hearts. Firstly, though, on this first Sunday of the new year, with all of its unknowns, we thank you that we can come in and through the precious name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray we shall know your presence with us this morning. We do thank you that although this year there will be so many unknowns for each one of us, we can know that you will be with us every step of the way because you have promised. We pray first for Pastor Mike and Sue. Please, Father, lay your healing hand on Mike to give complete restoration to the sight of his damaged eye. Please relieve the pain for Mike and for Sue from her back. 
You are a miracle working God. Please give them renewed health and strength. We thank you, Father, for the wonderful skills of those doctors over in the eye department. Father, we lift up to you and Joan's little family, and we pray that Will will have no permanent damage, and that when he has the ECG, that you will have already healed any damage, and that Will will be completely restored. And we ask for Hannah that she will keep well herself over the next four weeks until they welcome their second little one. Please give them your strength and your peace too. May they come to experience the great power of prayer and the wonderful way you answer. We pray for all of Zoe's family who had COVID in the run-up to Christmas. Oh, please bless them as they recover completely. And please may Zoe know your strength and your presence as she will be so busy as a carer today, bringing comfort to those that she will be caring herself. Thank you for bringing Steve through his experience of COVID in hospital. And may he regain his strength and recover from any lingering after effects. And we thank you that he's here this morning. And we pray for Julie's cousin, Alan, as he awaits surgery for that hernia. And we pray that Andrew will soon know the result of the x-ray on his leg. May Andrew and Jackie know your lovely presence with them while they wait. We rejoice with Anne on the safe arrival of little George Adam. May he bring much joy and happiness to all the family. And lastly, Father, we just pray that you will bless Mervyn and Caroline with the wonderful news of their engagement. We remember those in our fellowship who can't be here today for whatever reason. May they all be aware of your presence with them especially where there are health concerns. We pray for our friends in care homes or folk who are still staying indoors because they are wary of leaving home because of COVID. Oh, Father, how we so long to see an end to this awful virus. And we pray your protection for our friends. Father, it is good to be in your house this morning to worship you in all your glory and majesty. How we praise you that our Lord Jesus was prepared to leave the glory of heaven and come into this dark and sinful world that first Christmas. Thank you that as we gather round your table this morning to remember your sacrifice in dying on the cross for us, may we never take Jesus coming to save us for granted but always be filled with thanks and praise for all that he so willingly did for each one of us. In Jesus' lovely and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's finish our time of prayer by joining in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Of temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Alice, for what you did. We're now going to have our offering song, and it's My Jesus, My Saviour. Remain sitting if you wish or you can stand whatever suits you best my jesus 
my saviour. Lord, accept these gifts as a token back for use to glorify you and to extend your kingdom here. Amen. We're going to have our scripture readings now. Right, our first reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And the second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, 
chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. We're going to sing, I am a new creation, that reflects that last portion of scripture that Addison read from Corinthians. I am a new creation. I don't know if any of you know it, but it's quite easy to pick up. So this morning's um, talk um, is a new resolution. I guess a new year always brings a, a sense of hope, doesn't it? Or does it? Christmas and New Year is full of high spirits, laughter, expectation, merriment. And yet... After it's all over, things go a bit flat, don't they? There's been this big build-up since the end of August, for some people. And the day comes, and the day goes in a flash, and they're shell-shocked. What, what happens next? And I'm not talking about people here, I'm talking about people that don't know the Lord. And that's evident, all that joy, all that goodwill seems to leave town very quickly. Uh, where I live in Budley for the last two nights, there's been a fight outside one night of my flat, and last night you should have heard the swearing and the language and the abuse that people were giving neighbours. It was so loud I could hear it in my flat. And yet, just a few days before, everybody's happy, everybody's in good spirits, and the same when I was employed in an office. Christmas Eve, everybody loves you. You come in on Boxing Day and nobody talks to you. And that's how it is for a lot of people, isn't it? And I guess passing from the season of goodwill, lights and carols, to the season of dark, cold midwinter can bring a sense of emptiness, can't it? Even depression. And... New Year's resolutions are made, aren't they? Who, who's made New Year's resolutions? Anybody? Good? Lovely? 
Okay. Um, in my humble opinion, I think New Year's resolutions are set up to fail. <laughs> I think we're setting us up to fail half the time. But, you know, just as the old year has gone and the new year is here, as Christians, we are the same. As we've just sung, we are a new creation. When we came to Jesus, he gave us a new life. And the old life has gone, or it should be gone. Let me read that to you again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to him through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And we celebrate that in a minute with our communion. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So God has made it possible for us to change, to be renewed daily, not by making a New Year's resolution, but by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we need to draw, I need to draw on daily. I need to draw on daily. And as we approach our communion, shall we just look at what, what God expects from us, his people, within the church? I think we need to explore what it means to be a new creation. So, when we turn to our scripture reading, Colossians 3, 12, 17, this is the epistle or letter that Paul wrote during his time in prison in Rome. It was around about AD 60, 62. He'd heard a report that the church was falling into serious error. error. False teachings, false practices in Colossae were influencing the early church and threatening their very faith. And I believe that similar cultural pressures pose challenges for not this fellowship necessarily, but for the church in general today. I can feel the church trying to be crushed by worldly things and crushed by the world and its influences. And the amount of churches now that are going away from true biblical teaching is, is amazing. If you look online and, 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 and explore, you will see so verse 12 says this, okay? Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, I note the term here, clothe yourselves. What do you do with clothes? You have to put them on, don't you? So it's saying that we have to put on this daily. We have to consciously make an effort to put on these attributes. And these are the fruit of the gospel, the fruit of the gospel in our daily lives. Heartfelt, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience should characterize our faith. Yes, the gospel saves us, but we must also grow in the goodness as evidence of our faith and show some of the fruits or all of the fruits of the Spirit. And in verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So that's saying that we should love each other in such a way that reflects the love of Christ to us. And that's unconditional love. Now, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says you have to like everybody. <laughs> it's probably impossible. But we must love everybody. And there's a difference. There's a difference. Sometimes people hurt us and our pride is offended. Sometimes we don't like what other people do. But as Paul says in the second half of this verse, 
we are to forgive because we have been forgiven. And it's not as easy as it sounds, I know. And it's only through the love of God breaking us that will do that. We can't forgive in our own strength, I don't believe. We can only do it in the Lord's and the Holy Spirit's empowering. Verse 14. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So Paul says that we must, as the primary evidence that we are united in Christ, to put on love. Again, put on love. Put it on like a cloak or a coat every day. And really and truly, love is expressed as something to, to cover all that we should be doing and saying and our interaction with one another. And at this point, may I suggest one resolution for this year, one for every day of the year, and that is put on the love of Christ every day. That way, our resolutions will not fail. Not in God's eyes. If we put on God every day, if we put on his love and display his attributes towards him and towards each other, we will not fail in God's eyes. And then in verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, through hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. So both of these verses, 15 and 16, they emphasise letting. It says, let the peace, let the message. We are to let this happen to us to let the peace of Christ rule over the condition of our hearts, to let peace be the decisive factor in our relationships with others. And in verse 16, we are to let the message of Christ, the gospel, the gospel that inhabits our lives both individually and corporately, we are to let that characterise everything that we do and how we do it, particularly in our worship services. The word of God and expressions of music are explicitly mentioned here in this very small window of the early church. It says, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. And verse 17, and whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So what are the consequences of my words and deeds, your words and deeds? deeds? Is our intent in all we say and do to honour and thank God? Or is it to please ourselves? In all things, we are told here to give glory to God in the name of Jesus. In a spirit of thankfulness, it says. In a spirit of thankfulness for who he is and what he has done. And we'll be remembering that shortly with the symbols of the broken body and the shed blood and the cross. So, my New Year's resolution, and I hope you join me in this, will be to put on the love of Christ every day. And that resolution will not fail us. It will not fail us. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, may your love flow through us that no matter what happens, 
we will be able to rejoice in your everlasting love. And grant that our lives might be one loud. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. We have grateful hearts. Amen. We're going to sing as we approach our communion this morning. We're going to sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And as we sing that lovely hymn, Let's focus on that cross and why Jesus went there and what it means to you individually and me individually. But we were saved and we have everlasting life. Let's just focus on that. When I survey the wondrous cross, As we prepare our hearts for communion, let's look back and remember what Jesus has done for us. Let's look inward and get ourselves right with God. And let's look forward to the return of Jesus, who we celebrate today. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for sending Jesus to pay the price of our forgiveness. And as we share communion, remind us that it was his sacrifice that makes it possible for us to be forgiven and stand pure in your eyes. In the silence now, let's draw close to him by confessing our sins and in our hearts forgiving anyone who has hurt us.
come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you're strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of yours gives you a right to come, but because you need God's mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and long to love him more. Come because Jesus loves you so much and gave himself for you. Come and meet the Lord Jesus Christ, for we are his body on earth. The Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord, and I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks and said, this is my body, which is for you, do it in remembrance. Let's do that. And as you receive the bread, please eat it straight away.
the psalmist said, how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. As the cups go round to you, please retain the cup and we will drink together in celebration as one body to show our unity in Christ. So that's the... This cup announces that Christ has died and our sins are forgiven. It also announces that Christ rose again and we have new life in him. It announces that one day Christ will return in all his glory. Alleluia. So let's drink together with thanksgiving and with expectation. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, we have we remembered your death upon the cross. We have celebrated your resurrection, enabling us to have new life. And we can look forward to eternity in your presence. And no words this morning can express our gratitude and amazement that you should do this for us, that you should die for us. How amazing it is that each of our lives is so valuable to you that you would lay yours down to reach us. May your spirit help us to serve you and to care for each other and to take your message of love and grace out into the world. Amen. We're going to sing our closing song, There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer. Please stand and sing with gratitude to our Lord Jesus.
May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God to serve us. May the loving hands of God protect us. May the ways of God direct us. And may that loving, unconditional love of God dwell within our hearts forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let's say the grace together, shall we? Say it to each other. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you all for taking part and everything. Um, there is coffee in the back and um, we will need some help, some uh, strong help, I won't say manly because that's sexist, some strong help to move the chairs a bit later. Thank you and Happy New Year. Thank you, Peter.